Our next important speaker comes all the way from Sweden, Mr. Ulf Bostrom from Gothenburg, Sweden. Mr. Bostrom is currently serving as the police inspector of Gothenburg City and is responsible for monitoring all the organizations in the city. He's a very close friend of the community and shares very positive views about the Jamaat. I would like to welcome him to our Jalsa Salana and request him to come and say a few words. Assalamu alaikum. Your Holiness, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, thank you for inviting me to Yalsa Salana. I'm standing here as a single police officer, but behind my back is the whole Swedish democratic police force. Like any other police in the world, we investigate crimes. If we take a murder, for example, when we catch that murderer, he will be punished. But during the investigation, if we find out that this murder was done by hate, hate that you hate a special political group, or you hate a special religious group, then we see different on it. The punishment will be much bigger for the one that do crimes with hate. Sweden is a unique country. We have had peace for 200 years. My country don't know what war is. But because of all the war, civil war and persecution in the world, we have many refugees and immigrants coming to Sweden. And they let us know what they have been through. During these 200 years, we have developed democracy, human rights, and equality. The people, the refugees in Sweden, they come from all countries around the world, all colors, all cultural background. There is all political ideas from all the world, and there are all religions. Coming to the religion Islam, we have all Islam in Sweden. We have the different Shia, when we come to Sunni, we have Ahmadiyya, the different school of Sufi Islam, the moderate Muslims from Hanifi, Shafi, Maliki, and if we go to Hanbali, we have the different steps of Wahhabi, the political Islam from Muslim Brotherhood, and we have the terror groups in Sweden, yes. We have Al-Qaeda, we have Islamic State, Daesh, Al-Shabaab, we have it all. We have come to understand after a long time that Ahmadiyya is persecuted in their own country. And as a police officer in Sweden, you do investigations. And the investigation of Ahmadiyya is that they are being murdered, tortured, and persecuted in their home country. And why? Because they see the religion in the Ahmadiyya way. And what has Pakistan done to help the, help the Ahmadiyya? I have asked many Ahmadiyya, don't the police help you? The military, the government help you? No, the opposite. They have made criminal laws against Ahmadiyya. These laws are criminal. It is against international law. It is against UN conventions. And it is against human rights. And also, it's against Swedish law. Because if you do crime with hate, 
we will punish the person harder. So to call yourself a Muslim or your mosque for a mosque or pray openly, that is three years of prison and fine. That is not acceptable. You have one Nobel Prize taker from Pakistan. His name is Mr. Salam. He had the Nobel Prize in physics. He was Ahmadiyya. Before him, long time before him, there was another Nobel Prize taker. His name was Albert Einstein. He said that there is no reaction without an action. And from this we can learn there is no social reaction without a social action. And consider what kind of social action Pakistan have done through Ahmadiyya. Hundreds of thousands of Ahmadiyya have left Pakistan. That is the social reaction. But what they not did consider was that the Ahmadiyya outside Pakistan would flourish, flourish in 207 countries. That was not the meaning of the social action they did from your home country. I have spoken to many Muslims in my hometown, and I've asked them, what do you think about Ahmadiyya? And I say, we don't like them. I ask, if you don't like them, do you think it is it's okay to, to murder, torture, and to persecute them? And they say, no. It's against the Holy Quran. And one of my friends, he is a Hafiz, and he said, Read Al Hudirat, Ayah 13. He speaks about that we are come from different mothers and fathers and making different tribes. And we are doing this to learn from each other. And when you read the undertext of that ayah, it says the meaning of the ayah is equality among human beings. 1,400 years ago, the Quran was speaking about human rights. Another Imam told me, read Al-Maida, Ayah 32. If you kill one person, it is like you have killed the whole humanity. But if you save one person, it is yet like you have saved the whole humanity. I am not scholar in Islam but I can read and write. And reading this, it becomes very difficult for me to understand how Islam can tolerate persecution and torture and murdering of Muslims. The Ahmadiyya have unsocial action. That is love for all and hate for none. And what happens with the social reaction? Here on this place, you have had many leaders from the world speaking about Ahmadiyya in a very good manner, in very good words. I just got the note, your time is out. <laughs> I thank you, I thank Ahmadiyya, and I wish you really success in the future. Salam Alaikum.